excuse for carelessness. And I wasn't even careless. That was stupid. Well, what are you yelling about? You're still alive, aren't you? But oh, barely. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just got through promising Hop Sings that things were going to be a little pleasant around here from now on, and here you two are bickering at each other again. What started this time? I made well, a mistake. Paul, all, right. all right, all right, all right, all right. Forget it. What's the matter with you two? You've been working too hard. No, Paul, it, it ain't that. We ain't been working too hard. It's just that this one here was, was born Henri. Oh, is that right, big brother? Well, let me tell you something. I'm... Hold it. Go to town. Forget about everything here. Relax. Go away. All right, I'm not going to say no to that. Cold beer and a few friendly faces would be a nice change. I'll take the south. Fine. The north road's fine for me. Good, good, good. Just not having you two fellas around here for the day will be a pleasant vacation for me, too. Why couldn't I have had two daughters? Simpson's running for mayor. Yeah, Sheriff Coffee's out. He told us about it. Well, now, I sort of promised Judge Clampton that I'd ask folks for votes, you know, just to make it look good. Now, if you want to vote for Titus Simpson, that don't hurt my feelings at all. Matter of fact, he make a better mayor than me. Yeah, well, I, I ain't decided how I'm gonna vote yet, Dennis. Yeah, well, now, it don't matter how you vote, so long as you vote. Hey, that ain't bad. I'm gonna remember that. Well, so long, Hoss. Spend some money in here. Yeah. Little Joe, how are you? How are you? It's a long bar. I'm standing at this end. And I won't argue. Pa always taught me to have respect for my elders. What'll it be, boys? Beer. Friday after the election, 
on the house. It won't be much of an election, Reno. At least why he's not now. Phineas Burke lost any chance of winning it just a minute ago outside. Are you suggesting, little brother, that Phineas Burke lost votes because he talked to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, when word gets out that he's been glad handing you for your vote, everybody's gonna know he's a desperate man. Nobody wants a desperate man for a mayor, so naturally they'll all vote for Titus Simpson. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh, boy. When you get the honorees, you get them in all directions, don't you? Phineas Burke ain't desperate, and you know it. Oh, but he's gonna be desperate come Friday when he finds out that Simpson's getting all the votes. Oh, I reckon you're gonna vote for Simpson. Yes, that's right. I like to be on a winning team. And that's exactly why I'm voting for Phineas Burke. Oh, that's good. That's two votes he'll get, yours and his. He'll get a darn sight more than that. I'll bet you I'll bet you he wins that election by a landslide. You gotta bet, name it. Name it. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> name it. Yeah, see? All talk. All talk, huh? All right, you'll be the one that shuts up when I tell you the bet I got in mind. Well, uh, how about, uh, uh, how about a trip to San Francisco and, and lose or pay all? Yeah, well, that's, uh, kind of, that's kind of a stiff bet, isn't it? <laughs> now who's weaseling out? All right, nobody's weaseling out. I'm not weaseling out, you got a bet. Man, I'm going to win it. I now, wouldn't boys. be so sure of that. I Maybe you don't you're know not it. Win. Maybe you don't know it, boy. But neither Simpson nor Burke care much one way or the other which one becomes mayor. They've been good friends for too many years to want to make a fight out of it. Spend all your money here. You're uh, you're gonna need to pay my expenses when I go to San Francisco. <laughs> well, Joseph, hey, it's been quite a while. Something I can do for you? No, no, Mr. Simpson. Just wanted to stop by, say hello, say how you're doing. Well, that's mighty nice of you. Hey, I hear you and uh, you and Phineas Burke are running for mayor. Oh, we got our names on the ballot, but we just did it as a favor to Judge Clampton. Hey, well, wouldn't be so bad being the mayor, though, would it? Oh, I don't right care, Joseph. You don't care? Well, you're not saying it's not an honor to be the mayor of Virginia City. Oh, I suppose it is. But, well, I'd be just as happy if my friend Phineas were elected. Say, that's not the way we learned it in school. No, we, we were taught that a, a candidate went out among the people, let them know what he stood for. Well, there's no need. Phineas and I agree on everything. Uh, you, you could hand out a few drinks. Drinks cost money. Kiss a few babies? That, that, that doesn't cost anything. Huh? Not me. Well, I'll tell you, I'm disappointed. I really am, because it's not fair. It's not fair to the people of Virginia City not to let them know where you stand. Oh, come on now, Joseph. Well, there's nobody that much interested. Oh, I am interested, Mr. Simpson. I am interested. Because to tell you the truth, I think you're the only man for the job. Why, Joseph. That's a mighty fine thing for you to say. It's the way I feel. You know, I always said that young folks should take an interest in their government. If you want to hand out free drinks and kiss some babies, you go right ahead. Uh, Mr. Simpson, are, are you saying it would be all right with you if I just sort of went around and tried to get a few people to vote for you? I'd be ungrateful if I said no. I mean, if that's the way you want to spend your time. I don't need to spend my time or spend my money. What's that? I, I was just saying, it's, it's the duty of of every interested citizen to, to pick the candidate of his choice and then see that he's elected. Now, that, that's the American way. Why, Joseph, that makes me feel right warm inside. I know how you feel. I better get to work. Well, now, don't you forget that this was your idea, not mine. Like I said, I just as soon see my friend Phineas elected. You just get used to being called Mayor Simpson. The Honorable Mayor Titus Simpson. Yes. 
Celso. Good citizens have a moment. I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the next mayor of Virginia City. Ha have a drink. Thank you, little Joe. Thanks, Joe. You come to think on it, there, there is an election Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Burke and Simpson. There ain't nothing to get all head up about. Either one would make a good mayor, you know, six of one, half a dozen the other. Even Stephen. Gentlemen, please. Please, do you realize you're talking about, about the highest office we voters can give a man in this city? A, a man who is going to guide our destiny for the next four years? Hmm. Appears like you're pretty fired up about this, little Joe. Which man you figure ought to be mayor? The only man a thinking man would vote for. A vote for Titus Simpson is a vote for honest government. Are you saying that Phineas Burke ain't, ain't honest, Joe? Oh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying it. You know, I did feel that Burke overcharged me when he fixed my rifle last month. Boss, you just got to give that brother of yours the A1 medal for crust. He suckered you into making a, a bet that he sure intends to go his way. Does Titus Simpson know you're out beating the drum for him, Joe? Oh, you bet he does. I just got through talking to him. So that's where he's been. Titus Simpson's a peck smarter than I give him credit for, holding on until just four days before the election. Any man that's that conniving just got to be a good politician. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then getting himself a campaign manager. Campaign manager. Yeah, I, I guess you could put it that way. How about another drink? Thank you, little Joe. Joe. <sighs> Campaign manager. It's a nice ring, Citizens! It ain't fair, Bruno. It just ain't fair. I don't see why not, Hoss. He sure ain't sneaking around behind your back. Same token. Nothing to keep you from handing out a few drinks. Yeah, you doggone right. <clears throat> Just so happens, Hoss, I have some real fine whiskey right here. Yeah, well, hang on to it for me, Bruno. This is going to take more than whiskey. Baker? Come, come now, Hoss. There ain't a finer man in this world than my friend and partner, Titus Simpson. I don't know where you got the idea, but he just would not do that kind of a low and sneaky trick. He would? He has? He has. Look here. Phineas, he's done got little Joe for a campaign manager, and he's over giving out free booze and a lot of loose talk about how much more honest Titus is than you are. Well, I appreciate your interest, but I just know you're mistaken. Titus and me are just like brothers. I'd say we're almost as close as you and Joe. Ha! Don't you go counting on how close me and little... I don't understand. You got a, a lot of understanding to pick up on, Phineas. Take a look at that. Friends, friends let, let me just take a moment. I don't want you to think that Titus Simpson is trying to, to buy your votes. This is merely his humble way of, of expressing his modest thanks to each and every one of you. Yeah. Yeah. But let me ask, has any one of you gotten a free drink from Phineas Burke? <laughs> Titus Simpson stands for progress. Yeah! Yeah! And Titus Simpson is a man of integrity. I don't believe it. That's your brother. Now you're beginning to understand. Drink up, fellas. What a man you've got going for you. Come on, drink up. Yes, good citizens, as Titus Simpson's campaign manager, I can tell you without fear of contradiction. Titus Simpson stands for fearless leadership. But he didn't want to be mayor. He didn't want the glory. My friend. My partner. Whether you agree with... Whether you agree with little Joe or not, you've got to admit us citizens should be paying more attention as to who's going to be the next mayor. And free drinks or not, I'm voting for Phineas Burke. Burke? Didn't you hear me telling how he robbed me blind when he fixed my rifle? Well, only a second-grade boob would vote for a slicker like that. You calling me a boob? If the shoe fits. <laughs> Uh, 
Phineas, you gotta face facts. Now, unless you do something, do it quick. Titus is gonna win this election. You gotta do like he done. Get yourself a crackerjack campaign manager. Well, I've been flummoxed, sure enough, but I ain't gonna let no grass grow under my feet. And I know the only man I want for my campaign manager. The only man that can match that smooth-talking brother of yours. Well, you better look him up quick. Well, I don't have to look him up, boss. The man I want is you. Ah, Phineas. Just in time. Fresh coffee. Yeah? Well, which cup got the arsenic in it? What? Oh, don't play the innocent lamb with me, you backstabbing coyote. What? Oh, quit saying what. You gonna deny you sent Joe Cartwright out to get votes for you? Well, sure, he was here, but... Oh, you gonna deny you knew he was gonna pass out free drinks, make speeches, call me dishonest? Well, I knew about the drinks, but... Oh, quit saying but. Although now I got you dead to rights, maybe that's all you can say, you two-faced skunk. Now see here. Oh, now that's been my trouble, not seeing. Not seeing what a dirty, oily-tongued snake you really are. Now see here. Oh, now quit saying, now see here. As a matter of fact, quit saying anything. Now you hold on just one minute. Don't you start that again. From now on, you and me are through, you understand? Finished. Where you keep his chalk? Here, 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 here. You stay on your side. Get, get over here. You stay on your side, and I'll stay on my side. And don't you worry about me being here too long, neither, because after Friday, I'm going to be moving into the mayor's office. So that's it, huh? You heard Joe Cartwright asking people to vote for me, and it bothered you. That means you really wanted to be mayor yourself. Oh, listen, who's talking now? Now, see, just... Don't you step over that line! I'll step over any line I please! Now, this is gonna be the sorriest election we ever had, clown. It's all my fault, too, getting Titus and Phineas to run against each other. I should have known they wouldn't make an issue out of it, being friends like they are. They're real pals, that's for sure. But it's the end. A Damon and Pythias. <laughs> you try crossing that line again, you'll be sorry. Try throwing another chair at me, and I'll throw you through the window. You did say Damon and Pythias. Sounds more like Cain and Abel. Ha! If you were mayor, I'd leave town. Doesn't it? It's nice to have some peace and quiet around here for a change. That's what are you doing, writing your memoirs? No, sir. <clears throat> writing a speech for Phineas Burke. He's running for mayor, you know. Uh, Paul. How do you spell graft? I think of a better word. <laughs> graft. Hey, Joe. Joseph? Hmm? Yes, sir. You told me you were writing a speech, too. Yeah, I'm not writing it for that thief, Burke. Mine is for the next mayor of Virginia City, Titus Simpson. Honest Titus Simpson. I suppose, uh, having... Opposing political views in one family is all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's the American way, huh? Well, uh, Phineas and Titus, of course, are both very fine men, and I think it's commendable that you two are helping them with their speeches, but we've got to get your work done in a hurry. We've got to get an early start. I'll have Singh run him into town for you. We've got a real really hard day's work. Yeah, Paul. Oh. Paul, oh, I, uh... I don't think I'm going to be able to do any chores, Paul, until after the election on Saturday. You see, I 
I got myself volunteered as campaign manager for Phineas Burke. Yeah, and uh, I'm doing the same thing for Titus Simpson. Campaign managers? Joe, maybe we ought to resign. It ain't fair. It's a dirty trick to pull on Paul. What do you mean resign? Look, we'll just work extra hard next week and we'll get Pa Day off. Look, unless you're trying to weasel out again. No to your life. <laughs> Expected nothing like this. The well, way I figured, nothing's too good for the next mayor. Mayor Simpson. Mayor Titus Simpson. <laughs> Does sort of have a ring to it, don't it? Mm -hmm. huh? Hey, Tim, how about a little more red bunting on the railing, huh? You bet, Mr. Simpson. If I'm gonna be mayor, I reckon I better start acting like one. We'll show that Phineas Burke how real politicians work, right, Joseph? Mm, well, that's the attitude. Say, Joseph, there's something I want to discuss with you. You want to ask? Well, more Birchman. He started a deputy. We saw the whole thing. Yeah, I know. It's my guess he's one of Burke's hired hands. On your feet. We got to teach that Burke that he can't pull any underhanded tricks on us. Well, Mr. Simpson, you, you really didn't see anything. Don't you think you're going a little bit too far? Now, looky here, Joseph. It was you who started the ball rolling. It was you who forced Burke to show his hand. Forced him to show me what a perfidious turncoat he really is. Now, Mr. Simpson, I really think you're going a little too far. I'm just taking your advice. Is that the kind of a man you want for a mayor? It's time for a change. Drive the rascals out, I say. A new broom sweeps clean. May I remind you, Joseph, that those are your words? The speech you wrote for me? The speech that's going to make me the next mayor of Virginia City? Yeah, but I, I wanted to talk to you about that speech. Maybe, maybe we ought to tone it down a trifle. I mean, the way you say it, just it doesn't sound the same. That's not the image that I... Image? By gad, Joseph, you've done it again. Huh? I've got to be a, an image to the voters. Well, not the real me, but, but the man they think they want. I've got to get over to the tailors and get me some new duds. Mayor Simpson. I'll see you later, Joseph. I gotta practice if I'm gonna make that speech at two o'clock. Hello, Mr. Simpson. I'm Mayor Simpson. Howdy, 
Phyllis. Your speech is all set for 2 o'clock now. I've been out on the street talking enough with all the folks, and you ought to have a good crowd there. Uh, I don't know, Hoss. Uh, not too much on this speech-making. Phyllis, you'll be great. I mean, after all, I, I spent a lot of time writing that speech. Now, you ain't gonna let me down, are you? Oh, I'll do my best. I gotta admit, you sure wrote a fine speech for me. Yeah, I mean, you really got away with words. When in the course of human events... Well, that's plumb beautiful. Yeah, it just sort of come to me. Uh, look, Phyllis, you gotta practice because you gotta be good. It ain't so important what you say. It's how you say it. You see, if you do it good, you'll have all them voters yelling and stomping, and they'll be yelling, Phineas Burke, the next mayor of Virginia City. You really think so? Doggone right. You better, too, unless you want old Titus elected. Never. Now, you practice that speech here, and I'll see you at 2 o'clock. Well, I'll be ready. When in the course of human events... When in the course of human events... When in the course of human events... Ma'am? Oh, Beth. All right. See you pretty busy. Yeah, I'm pretty busy. Wonder if I can talk you into coming to town. Huh? Well, Joe and Haas are in there. You just wouldn't believe the ruckus they've stirred up. Three days ago, it was peaceful as ducks on a mill pond. Now it's more like a sack full of bobcats. They're not doing anything illegal, are they? I don't know, nothing illegal. But I'm sure prodding folks into making a mess of things. 26 fights, four busted store windows. I, I got 14 of the town citizens locked up in jailhouse, Ben. Well, Clem, I, you're not criticizing people for expressing their political views, are you? Because it's my opinion, no, that, that people should take an interest in the government. That's a mild way of putting it, Ben. Well, maybe the boys are expressing a youthful exuberance in their campaigning, but uh, what, well, as you said, they're not doing anything illegal. Nothing but making enemies out of old, long-time friends. Nothing but egging folks on to tearing half the town apart. Well, you must be exaggerating. You see, healthy dissension... No, I'm not. ...in an election is what keeps our country strong. It's the American way. I know you didn't come to hear me speak. You came to weigh the words of a man who cherishes the future of this fair city. A man who holds dear the very principles on which this nation was founded. A man who needs no introduction. Citizens, the next mayor of Virginia City. the man you came to hear speak, the next mayor of Virginia City. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the next mayor of Virginia City, Phineas Burke. <laughs> now, citizens, just, citizens, just a minute. Now, is this any way to run a democracy? After all, one of the great principles of this country is free speech. And I'm quite sure you're not going to allow this rude interruption to keep you from hearing the words of my candidate. Thank you. Uh, good citizens of Virginia City. I, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, yes, yes. I, I, I stand before you, uh, fearless and undaunted, uh, 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 ready to uh, uh, assume the uh, duties of. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, yes. I, I, I stand before you. Uh, 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 I forgot the speech you wrote. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they can't say we didn't give them a chance. You came here to listen to a speech. And by grannies, you're going to hear one. I give you the golden-throated Phineas Burke. I'm sorry, Joseph, but at least I didn't do as bad as he did. No, you're right. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Uh, citizens! Citizens, your attention for just a moment. I just wanted to tell you why, why Titus Simpson was unable to speak to you a moment ago. It's because he was choked up. He was choked up. And why? I'll tell you why. Because he could see the trust and the respect in the eyes of the people that he holds so dear. Now, doesn't that prove to you that he is the only man to be at the helm of the highest office of Virginia City? The only man who can guide us through the stormy seas ahead. A man of progress, a man of destiny, the unimpeachable Titus Simpson. Ladies and gentlemen, now you heard all of that hogwash, listen to mine a while. The only reason Mr. Burke here, the only reason he didn't say nothing was if he was just choked up more than, than Mr. Simpson was. No, that proved that he's even, that he's even more, um, what was that word? Unimpeachable. Unimpeachable, yes, unimpeachable. <laughs> I don't know much about a hand at the helm on a stormy sea or none of that stuff because it seems how we're better than 100 miles probably from the ocean. <laughs> Finished Burke here to make a doggone good mayor, I can tell you that. Getting to them, Joseph. side you should have been on. That's dirty politics and you know it. Only a man like Simpson would pull a trick like that and you'd be a boob if you voted for him. You calling me a boob? If the shoe fits. Citizens of Virginia City, and as I gaze out over the stormy sea of life, and I see calm and prosperity. Fearless and undaunted, I stand before you, while over there stands a man that no one should trust. But, uh, not even his best friend and business partner. If you're going to elect a man like that, that would sink his own business partner, then everybody's going to go down like a rock.
to you about the Davis thing. Just a minute. I want to tell you my attitude about this thing. Now, now listen to me. This is very important. or you'd have probably tried to stuff the ballot box for Simpson. Is that so? Yeah. Burke's the one who needs that. Why, you're probably the only boob in town who voted for him. You calling me a boob? I said it before, and I'll say it again. If the shoot... That'll be just about enough. I have had it. Now, you go that way, you go that way, and try to stay away from each other. This has been a beautiful election, beautiful. Well, it looks like every eligible voter in town's filled in his ballot. Uh, I'm sure you're right. We can't officially close the polls for another two hours. Well, even so, there's no law that says we can't count the ballots now. Well, that, that'd be okay by me, Judge, but I expect we'd better get us a couple witnesses. Don't want nobody accusing us of any shenanigans. Well, shenanigans? Shenanigans? What makes you think there'd be any shenanigans about this election? i tell you what. You go get two witnesses. Get Joe and Hoss Cartwright. Yeah. Shenanigans. <laughs> Burke, Burke, Burke. Simpson, Burke, Simpson, 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 Simpson. That's all. I'll call him up, Clem. Come on, Clem. Burke win? Who won? Well, come on. Is Simpson winning? Well, not yet. Uh, well, come on, let's Burke go. Win? Did, did Who's on? There's no doubt about it. 302 votes for Phineas Burke, 302 votes for Titus Simpson. It's a tie. Oh, wait, wait, maybe you made a mistake. What do you mean it's a tie? Look for yourself. 100, 200, 300, 100, 200, 300, two left over. It's a tie. 302 votes apiece. Well, we got to find somebody else that hasn't voted yet. Otherwise, we're going to have to call this a no contest. We're going to have to have an election again next week. No, oh, no, not that. I wouldn't like that. Hey, Paul ain't voted yet, has he? <laughs> By Jiminy Hush, you're right. First time in my life, I deliberately decided not to vote. What do you mean you decided not to vote? First of all, with you two on the opposite sides of the political fence, I didn't want to be in the position of having to take sides. And second of all, Burke and Simpson are good friends of mine. Both are equally capable. And a 
If you two hadn't interfered, the town would have been perfectly content to have either one as mayor. But, Paul, it's your vote that's going to make the decision. you got to vote. That's right, otherwise it'll be a runoff election next week. The American way to do it. Yeah, but Paul, if there's another election, then there's got to be another campaign. Yeah, and, and where are the campaign managers? I'll sign them for you, Pa. And don't forget, Pat Simpson make a wonderful mayor. I'll get your hat, Paul, in the name of Phineas Burke. Mind telling me and Joe how you're going to vote? That seems to me the way a man votes is his private business. Yeah, but uh, in this case, it isn't going to make much difference. I mean, everybody's going to know how you vote. Me and Joe want to know who won the bet. Bet? Oh, is that why you two boys have been putting on this great big display of civic zeal? Bet, huh? All right, what was the bet? Well, see, the loser's got to pay the other way to San Francisco a little vacation at the end of the summer. <laughs> it's a good bet. It's a very good bet. But you boys made one slight miscalculation. I'm the one who's going to San Francisco. And you're the ones who are going to stay home this summer and work. Is that clear? And while I'm in there voting, I think you boys might just walk around town and try to patch up some of the damage you've caused. Is that clear? Looks like we both lose, no matter how you vote, don't it? Yeah. I just made it, Ben. Polls close in a few minutes. I've had him a time. The boost's over there. I don't feel you have to hurry. No fool like an old fool. What? If I had a dunce cap, I'd wear it. I don't need a dunce cap. I ought to get kicked by a mule. Ruined. Friendship of 20 years ruined. And it's all my fault. Well, that ain't so, Titus. It was me that ruined our friendship. I got delusions of grandeur. The truth of the matter is, we both got suckered in by them smooth-talking Cartwright brothers. Some I want you to know, Phineas. I voted for you. And I voted for you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, uh, we still don't know which one of us is going to be mayor. Well, I hope it's you. Uh, I hope it's you. You're the better man. Hey. Hey. Oh, thanks. Mm. Well, either way, let's make sure nobody ever breaks up our friendship again. <laughs> Let's make very sure. Titus Hoss and I wanted to... You don't see these friendship wreckers, you. Troublemakers. Fellow out of shots. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, friendship wreckers, you. Get out, get out, and stay out.
you doing here? What are you always hanging around here for, huh? Come back here. What are you getting so excited about? A dad blamed Indian, what's his name? Why did you run him off the Ponderosa? Why, what'd he do to you? Nothing. Well, it's just a... Wherever I am, all of a sudden he just appears. I mean, out of nowhere. He's breathing down the back of my neck. He, he points those eyes at me like a double barrel shotgun. It gives me the willy. <laughs> I wonder what the express wagon's heading to the house for. I don't know. Let's get on our horses and find out. I got a package for you. you come from San Francisco today. Boy, will I be glad to get rid of it. Where are we? All right, end of the line. Come on. Go. Let me go. Let me go. Hey, hold on. I was supposed to give you this, too. <laughs> hold on now. Well, wait a minute, Dan. What is. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. He's a girl. I ain't need a girl. I'm a boy. Well, if you just control that boy or, or a girl or whatever, we'll try to find out what this is all about. Dear Mr. Cartwright, the sweet child before you is my daughter and related to you. Although we've never met, we are related, even though distantly. My father was William Cartwright. This is my daughter, Samantha. It ain't neither Samantha. It's Sam. Now, I haven't got time to explain right now, but I just can't keep her with me any longer. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can. Please, for the love of God, take her in. Take care of her. I can take care of my own self. And whatever you may think, I love her. She's all I have to love. Martha Cartwright Dorcas. I ain't gonna stay here. You better let me go. Oh, she better take her inside. We'll get to the bar place. Mm -hmm. You can to get back to work. Right, though. for my own good. But like I told you, she wanted to get rid of me. She hates me. Oh, now, look, Samantha. Yeah, I told you and told you it ain't Samantha, it's Sam. Ow! Oh. All right, Sam, now sit down here. All right, just stay put. Why do you want to be a boy? Because before I was born, my father wanted me to be a boy. So that's what I am, a boy. Well, where's your father now? I don't know. He went away last month and never came back. Mommy always scolded him for not having very much money. So he just went away. And then Mommy sent me away. Well, when your father went away, what did your mother do? She got a job in a nice place. And the men in the saloon were good to me. When your mother was working, who was taking care of you? Oh, she hired an old lady to take care of me. But I ran away every chance I got. And I'll run away from here, too. Just see if I don't. Look, look. Samantha. Sam, Sam. If your mommy hates you so, why do you want to go back? To be there when Daddy comes home. Mommy says he never will come home. But I know he will. And I want to be there when he does. Mr. Cotley, supper is almost ready. You better go wash your dirty little face, little boy. You can't make me. No wash, no eat. We no feed dirty little boy here. I ain't hungry. You still got a dirty little face. Come, hop, sing, wash, you wife. I can wash my own face. 
。哎呀，那个马老仔呢？我我帮他的是发了。Sam, better get some of this to eat before it's all gone. I ain't hungry. Well, I want you to sit down at the table anyway. I ain't tired. I ain't gonna sit nor eat as long as you keep me here. Suit yourself. I think I will sit, but not at the table. Sure is good. Yeah, boy, these are the best dumplings I believe I ever tasted. These are delicious. I'll starve myself skinny. Hey, boy, any more peas? I'm going to summon Sam's plate thing. Oh, God. Hey, wait. That was given to me. Yeah, you said you didn't want to eat it. Just for that, I will. Take care of. Yeah. Hey, no chance you get married tomorrow, is there, Paul? Oh. You know, I don't think one woman could take care of her. That kid is absolutely it. I N K O R R I O R. I know what you mean, but I can't spell it. No, neither can he do. I know what you're doing. You're trying to figure out a way how to keep me here. Sam, what we're trying to do is... I don't want to stay here. So all you have to do is put me on stage to San Francisco. All right, Sammy. It's a time for bed. What's that for? This is your nightgown. It's the best half thing can do. I don't need a nightgown. I sleep raw. Raw? You no sleep raw at this house. I you... do. Hey! What do you think? Tell me, Nishi! Mr. Conway, you the boss. You make her put this on. I'm saying she went in the kitchen. Kitchen's your responsibility and everything in it. Like a man, take my T-shirt. I won't wear it. Wait, 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 put my T-shirt. Wait, 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 wait. I won't, I won't, I won't. Mr. Conway, the final boss out. You be good girl and we be friends, yeah? Yeah, you sure she's related to us? Yes, yes, she, she is. I remember William Cartwright. I had a daughter, Martha, and he was my first cousin, so that would make that little girl up there your fourth cousin. Paul, can't you do what she wants done? Can't you put her on stage and send her back to San Francisco? So she can run around the streets of San Francisco again? Well, what are we going to do? You ride into Virginia City tomorrow and wire our agent in San Francisco to find Martha Dorcas 
and give her enough money to get here, and after that, we'll see what develops. That little girl's only real big problem is she's just spoiled rotten. What she needs is a good spanking. Hmm. Well, the little girl has a... has a good-sized problem. I don't know what a spanking would do. Well, you always seem to think they solve my problems. <laughs> now, that little gal... been uprooted... sent out to strangers in a strange place... feels all alone in the world... Unloved, unwanted. She's fighting back the only way she knows how, I guess. What she needs is not a spanking, but a little human understanding and compassion. Hey, what's that great big ugly old Indian doing outside my window? get anywhere with her, we gotta convince her that she is a girl, so get rid of them, burn them. girl. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> you sleep good? You feel better? I didn't sleep good and I don't feel better. Your breakfast is ready. I ain't hungry. Today you're going to be nice little girl. You and I going to be friends. Come, sit down. <laughs> I ain't gonna be nice and I ain't gonna be your friend. So there. Oh. I want my clothes back. Well, they all go into town. They come back with new clothes, more better for a little girl. I oh, know you, little boy. I know, little boy. Sit down, eat your breakfast. You can't make me eat. I'm going upstairs, and I'm going to stay in my bedroom until I get my clothes back. It's all right. You suit yourself. When you're hungry, you call me. I'll start myself blue. <laughs> Still in the bedroom? He plenty mad. Go away! Go away! Good morning, Sam. 
Got something for you here? Thanks. Ain't interested. Huh? Ain't interested, huh? Are you, uh, are you interested in this? What's that stuff for? This stuff, young lady, is for you to wear from now on. I ain't a young lady, and I ain't gonna wear that junk. You give me back my own clothes. Well, I'm afraid I just can't do that. You see, your clothes have been burned. You had no right to. Well, maybe I didn't have any right to, but I guess there's not much choice about what you're going to wear from now on. I'd rather run around raw. Just as you please. Oh, uh, you can come down any time you like. Raw, if you wish. Just for that, I will. Burning my clothes. I knew a little fella who looked like that, but this is a girl. Yeah, and a mighty good-looking little girl, too, huh? Don't you laugh at me. And I ain't neither a girl. I'm a boy. And I hate you. Now, and I you... hate everybody. Oh, no, you don't. Hold it, little lady. Well, I guess the time has come for that paddling. Yeah, well, like you said, boy, a little human understanding and compassion. Come on, young lady. All right. It didn't hurt much, and you didn't make me cry. It took two of you great big men to beat up on one poor little girl. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, you spanking gives a child a sense of security. It shows them that you're concerned about them, that you like them. I hope I didn't hit it too hard. Oh, you didn't hit her hard enough to raise her dust. Ground's lame. Left front foot. He's got a stone. Hey, Will, you got a knife? Not just here, I see. Be right with you. She's been helping Hobson in the kitchen. Has she? He's made me assistant chief cook and bond washer <laughs> for the Ponderosa. But remember, Hobson is still boss, Sammy. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, fellas, you hungry? Mr. Cartwright, I brought you some hot coffee. Well, thank you very much, Samantha. Thank you, appreciate that. I told Hop Singh I was going to behave myself while I was here. Well, I'm sure happy to hear that. But it ain't because you spanked me. I'm still going back to San Francisco and wait for my father. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to help you arrange that. You spanked me awful hard, Mr. Cartwright. I'll probably be walking sideways for a week. Well, I'm real sorry, Samantha. 
When other kids on our block got spanked, they didn't mind too much afterwards. Well, maybe that's because they knew that their fathers who spanked them loved them. My father never spanked me, and I know he did love me. I'm sure he did. Why did you spank me, Mr. Cartwright? Well... Was it because? Of course it was. Hey, Sam. Hey, that's a mighty pretty dress you got there. You like it? Sure do. Yeah, I'm sure glad you're not a little boy anymore. Don't you like little boys? Ah, we ain't got time for them little boys. But we like them little girls. Really? Yeah, the big ones, too. Matter of fact, we might marry one someday. You are? When? Oh, I don't know. When time's right. Well, we, we might wait for you to grow up, Sam, huh? I've been growing awful fast since I came here. I've noticed that. Hop Singh says I'm his best assistant, chief cook, and bottle washer he ever had. And he's going to learn me how to make biscuits. I'll bet you make it real good, too. I better get in town and see if there's any information. Here, you better load this. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Don't stand too close to this. You want me to go away? Mm -mm. Just don't stand too close. This is dangerous. I don't like you. I don't like you either. I like Hoss. When I grow up, I'm gonna marry him. You are, huh? Little joke, too. Both of them, huh? But I ain't gonna marry you, though. That's a deal. Don't you like me? I don't know, maybe because you don't like me. That's why I don't like you, because you don't like me. Well, that's kind of a Mexican standoff, ain't it? I think that maybe I do like you. Kinda. I think I, uh, I like you too. Kinda. Shake. Sh shake. That's the Indian that was outside my window. Just don't you go wandering off by yourself. You understand? Hey, wait for me. Sure, come on. I'm Martha Dorcas. Oh, Sammy Mama. Yeah. Mr. Cartwright, he out in the back. I go tell him you're here. You come in, please. Thank you. Is my daughter all right? Oh, she just fine. She out riding in the wagon with the boy. Come in, please. Come in. You're a Cartwright. And of course, you're welcome here, and welcome to anything you might need. I appreciate that. But being a Cartwright makes you part of the family. And so, there's certain questions I'd like you to answer. Your daughter, you put her on a stagecoach, sent her off to some strange part of the country. Her not knowing whether you really loved her, now, don't you think that was rather cruel? I didn't have a choice. I didn't want to hang around where I worked. She kept running away from the woman I had caring for her. 
Yes, she, uh, she told me about the place where you work. She said the, uh, the men there liked her very much. Look, I know what you're thinking. No. I don't think you do know what I'm thinking. Well, then, I apologize. Look, I worked in a saloon. I waited tables and I sang. That's all I did. Why didn't you come to me sooner? I'm a Cartwright, too. Would you go to someone you didn't even know for help? What about your husband? Well? Tell me about him. He was sick drunk when I met him. He gambled away his money. He had no place to go. I took him in, I cared for him, and I loved him. Maybe it was gratitude on his part, I don't know. But anyway, he said he loved me and he married me. And then he told me he had a wonderful surprise for me. He told me that his father was rich, had a big ranch across the bay from San Francisco. We were going to live there. He was going to straighten out, no more drinking, no more gambling. And he meant it. But by the time we got to the ranch, Calvin Dorcas had heard about me. He thought I was, well, you know what he thought. He met us at the front door. He didn't even ask us in. No man in the saloon where I worked ever talked to me the way he did or looked at me the way he did. Your husband, how did he react to that? Will stood up for me that time. He said he didn't need Calvin Dorcas or his money. He was going to stand up on his own two feet and be his own man. And he tried for a while. He failed? He fell back into his old ways until I got pregnant. Then he tried again. And failed again. You know what? He wanted a son. He knew that his daddy wanted a grandson. And then Samantha came along and he began drinking again. Where is he now? I don't know. I know, boy. How's it? Uh, this is Samantha's mother, Mrs. Dorcas, my son, Joseph. Pleasure to meet you. There was a man of Virginia City asking about you, a fellow named Calvin Dorcas. Uncle Joe took me for a buggy ride way up in the mountains. Of course, I'd like to ride you too, Uncle Oscar. Yeah. Come on, I'm better parked for Come on. <laughs> Come on. Mommy! Smack her. I told Uncle Ben you wouldn't come back. Oh, Mommy. You aren't gonna take me away, are you? I like it here. And they like me. And they're the only friends I got. I won't go. I won't, I won't, I won't. And you can't make me. I'm going to stay here and be assistant chief cook and bottle washer. Samantha, come over here. We're going to have a little talk. Please, Mommy, don't make me go. never coming back, is he? I don't think so. Go to your room. Why? Don't ask. Just go to your room. Thought you'd get away with it, did you? So that's Samantha. She don't look like a Dorcas. Mr. Dorcas, things have changed. Ain't got time to talk now. Come on, you. Who is this nasty old man? I'm your grandfather, Calvin Dorcas. And you're a Dorcas, too, and you're coming with me, young lady, whether you like it or not. I ain't a Dorcas. I'm a Cartwright. We'll soon fix that. Come on. Let come on. Hey, come back here, you. I said come back here. Get out of my way. Sir? Wait a minute. 
please. Just, just a moment. Now, who are you? Who are you? I'm Ben Cartwright. I own this house now. What are you doing here? I'm Calvin Dorcas, and I've come here to get my granddaughter. I got a court order given her into my custody. And don't you dare try to tell me it ain't legal. I had it confirmed here in Virginia City by Judge Davis. Mr. Dorcas, I want to say something to you. Things have changed. I'm going to try and open a little dress shop here. Oh, you've changed your line of work, huh? Well, that's a joke. I know you better. You're a saloon girl, consorting with every manner of duck and Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's enough of that kind of talk. Look, you can talk yourself blue in the face, Cartwright, but I still ain't going to leave my granddaughter with that woman. What have I ever done to you? You took my son from me. The only thing I had left to live for. You dragged him down into the gutter with you. He tried to come home. You're the one who shut the door in his face. Because he had you with him, with the smell of the saloon on you and the mark of who knows how many men on you. Mr. Dorcas, I warned you by using that kind of talk. Now, will you stop it? Now, take your hat off when you're talking to a woman. Now, you shut up and listen to me. Me? Shut up. Yes, 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 you listen to me. Now, Martha didn't drag your son into the gutter. The gutter is where she found him. Your son, from everything I hear about him, is a spineless creature. I dare because I know it's the truth. He didn't have the guts to accept responsibility. So he ran away. Now, why he didn't have the guts, I don't know. Maybe that's the way he was born, although I doubt it. But I'm just a little tired of hearing you tell the mother of his child that she's responsible for everything that happened to him. Mr. Cartwright! Sammy Corn! She ran away! She went up to her room. No, she go down back stair. I see her running into the wood. Wait a minute. You stay here. And don't worry. We'll find her. All right, let's spread out, huh? Boss, go up over the hill. And little Joe, you go up in that direction. All right, boss. Candy? Yeah. You go up there, I'll take this way. All right. No sign. Try the flats. Now you take that side, I'll head.
Sam, are you all right? The Indian, a nice man. I'm sleepy. She's safe. Oh, she's fine. She's fine. What happened to you? Oh, I'm all right. I just, I just fell in the river. It was dark out. I searched and I searched and I, I couldn't find her anywhere. It takes all this now. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Let's get him upstairs. It's all wet. Get him out of these clothes. Hey, you sure she's all right? Huh? She's fine. Come on. Sound asleep. He's a very sick man. Maybe he get chest sickness. Oh? He get very wet, very cold. Pretty silly running around like that at his age. Little girl is worth running around for. She is a granddaughter. The first time he's ever acted like it. Man change. Everybody change. I suppose so. Man try so hard for granddaughter. It's not all bad. to tell me. I I know I've been sick. Still don't feel good, huh? I can hear the, the flutter of black wings. I think I'm going to die. No, you aren't. Don't you argue with me. I ought to know. Anyway, what do you care if I do die? You called me a nasty old man now, didn't you? That's what you were. Oh, you think so, eh? Well, a fine granddaughter you turned out to be fine grandfather you are. Well, I wouldn't be lying here now on my deathbed if you hadn't run off now, would I? Well, I wouldn't have run off if you hadn't have come here to take me away. I was only going to do it for your own good. What else you got against me? You said very mean things to my mother. Well, I suppose I did. Well, you're awake, are you? How are you feeling? <gasps> Everybody wants to know how I feel, and nobody gives a hoot. That's right. Here. <clears throat> You've been doctoring me all along. Why? Why didn't you let me be good and sick and maybe even die when you had the chance? I didn't have much to do with whether you lived or died. I ain't been asleep all the time. I heard the Chinaman saying if it hadn't been for what you'd done for me, I'd have been mighty sick. I'd have done the same for anyone. But don't think you softened me up. I ain't changed my mind about taking Samantha with me, not one little bit. I didn't think you had. But I ain't going with you. Maybe Cartwright's right about my son. I guess nobody's to blame for the way he turned out, except, except maybe me. But if he was to come home, well, I mean, you don't want him to find his daughter Running around the wild like a red engine now, do you? No. No, I don't. Good. 
then I'll keep her at my home. See that she's raised right. Now that's what I wanted to hear. If you'll keep her in your home, I won't argue with you. You can take her with you. But, Mommy... It'll be best for you. Now, you two, talk it over and make your plans. Samantha? Oh, no, you don't. Mommy? Not now, baby. Listen, Mommy. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. Wait. I'll be right back. You. You're me. Now, wait a minute. It's... You made my father run away. You made my mother cry. You make everybody you know miserable. You're a bad man. All right. But a man can change, can't he? I don't believe you can. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, I'll show you. Go get your mother. Go and get her. Well, uh, will you come too? Come and stay with us until we get this child settled? Grandpa? Will you come and stay with us for a year or two? Grandpa? Will you stay with us forever to be my daughter and my granddaughter? Sam, where's Mom? She's upstairs talking to Grandpa. Huh. Mommy and me are going to live with him up in San Francisco. Well, now, isn't that wonderful? I'm going to be assistant chief cook and bottle washer on Grandpa's ranch. <laughs> oh, Uncle Ben. Oh, come on now. What's the matter, baby, huh? Hey, Sam, what's what the matter? Yeah. I thought you'd be all happy about that. I am. I'm... Happy, sad. Grandpa's ranch is a long, long ways off, and I won't see you. I won't see any of you ever again. Hey, I come up to San Francisco all the time. Yeah, we'll stop in and see you when we're up there. Sure, and then you'll come and visit with us, won't you? Gee, it'll be like having two homes, won't it? Yeah, that's right. Just like having two homes, Sam. And don't forget, Hoss, you either, though, Joe, about when I grow up. Oh, no. Mm -mm, no, we won't forget. What's, uh, what's this about when you uh, grow up? No, oh, that's just a little arrangement between Sam and Hoss and myself. Candy, too. I forgot about me. Candy, too? Well, she proposed. I didn't. Oh. We sort of, uh, work things out. <laughs> we work things out. Well, hmm. I really want to thank you for everything, Cousin Ben. Well, I'm so glad we had a chance to meet after all these years. Are you keep in touch? Well, I will. I ain't never been talked to like you talked to me, Cartwright. But I ain't gonna hold it against you. <laughs> Samantha, come on now! Dear? Sam, I guess this is goodbye, Smooth. You take care. Bye, Sam. Bye. Sam? Bye. And Hop Singh, don't forget about when I grow up. Hop Singh, no forget. What, you too? 
Who teach her how to make biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sam, this is goodbye. Goodbye, Uncle Ben. Oh, Sam. <laughs> oh. Be a good girl now and take care of yourself. Yeah, up you go, Sam. All right. Come on, Sam. Are we getting the right? We want to thank you for for, uh, for bringing back Sam. Yeah. Yeah, we sure do. Sam, my friend. Well, you have many more friends here now. What's your name? My name... My name is Nitsinek in your bun. What? What? Hey, what? It means... See... More. Huh. Well, see more? So come on in the house and have some lunch. Come on. Yeah. Come on. She's a ponderosa. I tried to build him just like yours. He's not so big and not so grandiose, but it's still a nice house. Oh, George, it's a fine house. <laughs> fine. Yeah. And the clothes, they're not so much Italian. Oh, you look like a regular cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Hi, Gina, how are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Gina. How are you? This is candy, candy. This is Gina. Well, hey, everybody, come on, sit down. I want you to taste the wine. Good, oh, good. Oh, I got a picture. I want got you all to taste the Vino de Ponderosa, which I name for my friend the Ben Cartwright's uh, ranch. You. With your permission. Oh, of course. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Drink to that. Vino de Ponderosa. Huh? Well, I'm not to finish. <laughs> Now, the second reason I ask you is to tell you that when I live in Italy, I work at the land. The land is not mine. The Baron, who owned the land, he come to me and say, Giorgio, someday you're going to be my best man. No, Giorgio Rossi said, nobody else is a man. I think all the time, he's a side, I think someday I go to America. I get to my own land, I think. Io sono americano, onorario. That means I'm an honorary americano. <laughs> I think all the time, America. I dream America. Then, five years ago today, I become American citizen. Ah. <laughs> now you can make applause. <laughs> it's a celebration, then. Yeah. 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 I'm still not to finish. To me, the wine is like a mirror of America's heart. I look inside and I see the faces of many friends. I see much hard work and the sorrow, but I also see the future for the world. I see freedom for everybody and trust. And now I come to another reason why I ask you here. Now I return to the trust which my friend Ben Cartwright to give to me when he lend me money for buy the wine press. Hey, hey. Is the United States of money good at any bank? <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Uh, I'm not finished. <laughs> and now, I want to tell you that this is only the beginning for George Rossi and the son. We're going to make a wine. Everybody in the whole world is going to know about the Vino de Ponderosa. Well, we'll that. that. Now so we can uh, drink because I finish. I sit down. <laughs> George, oh, there's, uh, there's nothing I can add to what you've already said, except to say that we're all very happy and proud that you're not only a neighbor, but a friend. Sure. I'll drink to that. Yeah, yeah I'll drink to that, too. My name is Joe Saban. I bought the trainer outfit. My land borders this place. Why you put the rope on this man? 
He's no animal. Ask him. He not believe. This man told me I could drink a spring. Did you tell him that, Junior? I say he can camp and a drink. This is my land and my water. You won't have it long, Mr. Rossi, if you let every ragged reservation jumper that comes along dip into it. What is this uh, reservation jumper? Well, it's someone who stays away from the reservation. There's only one man and one horse. How much can they drink? This one's got a teepee set up. And a squaw and a young'un moved in. There's another brave waiting up on the butte. And he probably wants to move in with a squaw and family. It's still two families, all right. There's still enough of water. That's not the point. The point is, these Indians are off their reservation. Now, you know what that can mean, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, I know. I'll, uh, I'll explain it to Mr. Rossi. Nobody have to explain it to me. It's my land and my water. The Indians, they stay on my land. It's all right, Red Sky. You can go. Go back to your wife and the family. You stay on the land, drink the water. And you, you, you know I trouble. I'm a United States citizen, I know my rights. You know who's gonna get off of my land? You! So mad. He tie up a my friend of the Indian like an animal. They're making me lose my appetite. They spoiled it all fast. I can't eat. You lose your appetite, too? What happened to the Indian? It was a bad thing. Huh? Come on, eat, uh, Giorgio. Well, I can't. Listen to the Indians, how they sing. <laughs> They're very happy, huh? <laughs> Make me very happy, too. <laughs> I got a single for you. Libia, oh, Libia, oh, Libia, oh, la, 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 Again, thank you so much, and I like the house very much. Excuse my George, Emma, you know how I am. Candy? Yeah. Don't uh, stick around too long. Make a pest yourself. I'll, I'll be right along. Bye-bye, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Joe. He's a nicer boy, this Candido. Look how nice they look together. Come see, come You know... I, I think it's time Regina get married. Oh, que far. What for? What's a hurry? Oops. Sorry. Why? Well, uh, I don't know. You talk fine when you talk about horses and cows and Indians. If you like me, it's no reason to be sorry. Well, it's... Just that you're different. From a horse or a cow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Do you know our Italian custom? No. We don't take our feelings lightly. Neither do I, Regina. Oh, 
big land. It makes me afraid. Sometimes I think I will never get used to the, the bigness, the cruelty I see here. Maybe I will never belong to this life. There is cruelty here, yes. Regina, look at the sky. It's big and black and empty, right? Well, there's another way of looking at it. It can be like a warm blanket on a cold night. There is gentleness here if you look for it. Uh, Regina. I have to get up early in the morning. Tomorrow I go see the Indian. Is it time we go to bed? Yes, Papa. Candy, maybe you better go with Papa. Sometimes he doesn't understand so good. Sure. I'll go with you, Mr. Rossi. Maybe I can be of some help. Help? <laughs> Thank you. I don't need the help. <clears throat> you can come if you like. Thank you. Night, Candy, darling. Good night, Mrs. Rossi. Regina. Good night. Good night. Friends, they come visit them, huh? Yahweh, Ika Kimowaki. No, no, that's his family. Oh. Yahweh, Iwawapaki. What did he say? Let's go, I praise to the great spirit of the sea, land, and sky. Yahweh, yes, Iwelolaki. To send gentle winds and rains that fall softly. It's beautiful. Red sky is a beautiful prayer. Is it just like a poem? And don't you worry. I'm your brother. You stay long as you like. Yesheni nati, sebele tanagua, lo kwachi, yesha piege, pijo pi. Use of the water. You stay on the land. Why, brother, speaks good words. His land, our land. That's right. The United States is a big country. There's a plenty of land for everybody. Now, what's he say? Uh, he says your kindness will become a legend. Who? Kikonena. Well, what is that? He's given you an Indian name. What he called me? White man who gave us the land. Red the sky, non capisce. Come si dice? Red the sky, you misunderstand. You see, when I say you stay on the land, then I mean you use the land. We just land, you see. Yeah. It's nothing to worry about, you see. They're just going to use them with the land. Mr. Rossi, they don't intend to use the land. They think you've given it to them. Oh. This is seed. We will plant seeds in land. Use land to grow food. See, it's a, it's a seed. Semi Grand Turco is a corn seed. <laughs> you know how to plant the corn. I plant. Ma, not like a Giorgio Rossi. Giorgio Rossi is a farmer. You see these Rossi, hands? They... These are hands that they handed the farmer. <laughs> My father is a farmer before me, and before him, his father was a farmer. Ma, come, everybody, you come. Giorgio Rossi is going to show you how to plant the corn. Yeah. Come on, come yeah. on. Yeah. Ah. 
First, to make a nice and deep hole. Is it hard to dirty? Then you push him in one seat. Not too deep, because you push him in too deep, there's no grow. Eh? Maybe it's a rot. Is it too high? Then it's a dry out, you know? Then you make a little amount of dirt. Then eh? you push him in another one away. Push him in another one. So on and so on and so on. Eh? You understand? You got a question? Why question? Indian show white men how to plant corn long time ago. Uh, let's see. Well, I forget. Please excuse me, but uh, I have to go water the grapes. <laughs> I see you later, my brother. <laughs> my brother. My sister. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Giorgio? Sì. Hey. Come to bed. Non posso dormire. All right, we talk if you can sleep. Vieni, vieni un po' qua vicino a me. Yeah, I, I think about the red sky. I think about his family, his people. How can I tell them to get off of the land? You talk good American. You just to say please, e loro se andranno. No, 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 non capisci. I make a mistake. Now the Indians, they think the land belongs to them. Belong to them? Is it a place for the white grapes? Si. I can't tell them to get off of the land. I think... Uh, I remember when Ben Carter right, he said to us, we have to get off of the land. <laughs> I say to him, I'm American citizen. I know my rights. <laughs> the United States is a big country. There's a plenty of land for everybody. I got a right to stay here. Red the sky. Is American a citizen? Uh, is American a citizen even before me? Now, if it's a right for Giorgio Rossi, American a citizen, why is it no right for Red the Sky, American a citizen? A logical no. Oh, George. In the whole world, there's no one like you. See, si, Giorgio Rossi is stupid. No, you smart. Zito. Look, Giorgio, this is a big country. There's lots of land, lots of other places. Si. Ma testa dura. Why I not think of this before? Ben Cartwright. Mm. He got lots of places. Dunque, non ci pensare più e vieni a dormire, vai. Su. Vieni a dormire, caro. Su. Ecco. Ah. Oh, all of a sudden, Mr. Rossi's got urgent business with his grapes, and away we go. Imagine trying to teach an American Indian how to plant corn. The minute he saw this, easy, clean, forgot what we came for. Oh, look, once a farmer, always a farmer. Oh, a good one. Howdy, Ben Cartwright. I bring you some wine. I bring you a message. Regina, she says, say hello. <laughs> Say something funny? No, no. Boys, go on back to work. I want to talk to Georgia. <laughs> nice to see you all again. Hosses. Sorry, was broken. Hi. Georgia, you try to teach an Indian how to plant corn is like me trying to teach you how to plant grapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make a little mistake. Yes, you did. You went up there to get Red Sky back to the reservation. And you wound up inviting him to stay. Well, it's no right to just to go in and tell a man he must leave. I have to have time to think. And what did you think? I... My, I make a mistake. Another mistake. <laughs> I forget all about it. I bring you wine. Vino de Panderos I know offer you. A <laughs> migliore de vino tutto il mondo. <laughs> we'll have some Vino de Panderos a little later. I want to know what you have been thinking, Giorgio. Well... I, I think that... The Indians, maybe they don't have to leave if they have some land of their own. 
But, but I only have a little bit of land. Giorgio. Even if I give them a little bit of my little piece, it's still not going to be enough. Giorgio, I want But to you, you got the more land than you can account. You want me to give them some of my land? Benny, you've been thinking the same thing. I've been trying to tell you this and get this through your head. It isn't what you would like to see happen. It isn't what I would like to see happen. It's what the United States government says mm -hmm. must happen. Now, they have signed a treaty with the Indians. The Indians live in some land given them by the government. This land is the reservation where they live, and they must live on that, or there could be serious consequences. What kind of a treaty is it says that the people got to go someplace where they don't want to go? This treaty has become a law. And we must obey the law, Jojo. You will admit to that? The law, he don't tell me what I got to do with my land. The men is a hungry. You want me to say to him, I don't want you to be hungry over here. I want you to be hungry someplace else. I don't know, Jojo, of, of course I agree with you. You know that I do. It's, it's just that I know what I'm talking about. Now, it, the longer you take to get Red Sky to go back to the reservation, the worse it's going to be for his family and the more dangerous. Now, believe me. If you don't want to talk to him, I'll be very glad to go out. Why, why, why you got to talk? I can't talk for myself. Well, I didn't say that you couldn't talk for no, yourself. No, I'm going to tell you something. Red Sky make me his brother. Nobody tell the George Rossi his brother going to go, he's going to stay. Except the George Rossi. Lorenzo and the Regina. They're coming. Don't hit the wall with the chair. When we're going to have a meeting, it's very important everybody's on time. In fact, it's very un American to be late. You hit the wall. Ah, sit down. We're going to have an exercise in a democracy. Hey, Papa, I was. Sit. Sit. Now, in a democracy, the biggest number is always right. So we're going to have a meeting. First you talk, then I talk, then we vote. Don't hit the wall. Now, Ben Cartwright, he's a very good friend, eh? He's also a very smart man. He says that we should send the Indians back to the reservation. I say we should let them stay. Just a few weeks, maybe. You're the father. We do what you say. It's not the American way. First we talk, then we vote. Candy says that he... Candy says? Hey, who care what the Candy say? He's no member of the family. I think maybe you can't make up your mind because you... I can't make up my mind. Hey, I make up my mind very good. How uh, you think I raise a family can make up my mind? You ever raise a family? All right, Regina, now you talk. You don't listen. Who don't listen? Hey, I listen very good. I just know I can listen to what the candy says. Number one, you're going to tell the Indians to go, no? See. Si. Well, you put it off. So they think they can stay, no? See. Si. Candy says that you shouldn't put it off. Again, what the candy says. How many times I tell you no one to hear what the candy says? No more. You want us to say what we think, but only if we think the way you do. You never let us finish talking. You stop, Lorenzo. You stop me. Hey, hey. You don't talk like that to your papa. No, no, no. Let her talk. That's the American way. I just want to remember what she say. I don't want her to know more about what the candy says. And one more thing. You still not too big for me to push you over my knee upside down? Oh, come on, please, papa. Non incominciare, vai. No, no, no. I just don't like to hear her say a papa's a tyrant. 
Maybe you like it this candy too much, huh? Maybe you like to have him and take care of you, put a roof over your head, take care of you when you're sick. No, that was a fuel. Regina! Viene qua! Regina! Regina! Viene qua! Yeah, he's really a fine figure of a man, isn't he, Wes? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's, he's just rugged enough to keep from being pretty. <laughs> Have your fun, boys. I'm having mine. Well, Candy, I know you appreciate the fact that Regina is something very special. I'm just paying a call on the girl, Mr. Carr, right? I'm not courting her. Oh, yeah, but that, that's just the way it starts out. And you get over there and you get to looking in them big brown eyes and then the trap springs. Wrong. Oh, everything is wrong. I don't live in that house anymore. He hates me. He hates you, too. Like I'm five years old, he treats me. Well, no more. La Comedia Finita. I won't go back. I won't. Well, well, simmer down now, Regina. What, uh, let's sort this out. You hate me also. Regina, nobody hates you. Oh, Candy. You love me, Candy. Only you. I work for you. I scrub the floors, I cook, I sew. Anything. Maybe in the beginning we don't have so much. We, yeah, but... Oh, but look, Ozzy, he's speechless with joy. Yeah. Oh. Other young married people have less to start. Isn't it so, Mr. Cartwright? Well, Regina, I think before people get married, they should get to know each other quite well, and marriage isn't based on economic problems. But I love Candy very much. You do? Of course I do. No me importa se la vita sarà dura. We love each other. Um, uh, Regina? Uh, Regina? Look there. Why don't we, uh, why don't you stay here overnight? And then we can talk about this sensibly in the morning, huh? Come on, run along. That's right. I must say, Oz, that the boy has a lot more charm than we ever gave him credit for. Yeah, and all wasted. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> hey, you know, you know that, that little cave up on the hill where we used to play? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, with a, with a feminine touch, that, that could be awfully home. No, no, it's just not funny anymore. It's just not funny! <laughs> all right, fellas, all right. Now, Joseph, I want you to ride over to the Rossies and tell them that Regina's here. They're probably worried about her. And tell her that we'll look after her real good until the smoke clears. Right. Hey, uh, you know, Candy, maybe you ought to run up there and kind of calm her down. Hoss, you think you might make some coffee for all of us, huh? Yes, sir. Mm, a whole bottle of Brooks Shambu. Mm. Get him here. He's my Indian. See, I, he live on my land. But you still not tell me why you have to always tie Indian up with a rope. Don't think I could have got him here any other way. Alive. 
You see, I caught him killing one of my steers. Non è possibile. I don't believe. Ask him. Is it true? Did you kill a steer? Hungry. Squall hungry. Oh, Dio mio, Maria. Sì, Nostri amici sono e fanno. Oh, poveretto. Diamogli qualche cosa a noi. Abbiamo tanta grazia di Dio. Adesso ci penso ah. io, eh? I've been through this, Mr. Rossi. Back in the Dakota Territory. Indians moved in. More Indians followed. They had to steal to eat. And that started the fighting. Bad fighting, Mr. Rossi. People were killed on both sides. I don't want that to happen here. We are kind of responsible, Mr. Sabin. We will pay for this deer if the Indian can have it. That's a good thought, son. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm the father. I make the bargains here, eh? How much do you want for your steer, Mr. Sabin? Twenty-five dollars. Vendor That's without. a fair price, Papa. I decided the fair price. I make the money, I spend the money. You spend your own money. I have no money. Nah. Ecco, questa è, è un sacco di farina di Gran Turco. Prendetela. Potrete farvi tanta polenta e levarvi tutta la fame. Ce n'è per voi e per tutta la vostra famiglia. Povera gente. Right. Get your women down there. Take home that beef. Go on. Tell you what, Mr. Rossi, I'll split the price with you. Split the price? What do you think, I'm a poor man? Huh? You think I can't afford Indians? Huh? Hey. Hey. How much for the next one, Mr. Sabin? No price for the next one, son. Oh, you mean the next one is she's for free, huh? If there is another one, I'll do what every man has to do when his property is threatened. Oh? I'll fight. What's the matter? Mr. Saban is right. Oh, Mr. Saban is right this Papa's time, wrong, yes. Huh? Now, can't you get it through your head? You are wrong. Mm. Mr. Saban is trying to explain to you the Indians can't help it. Now, if they don't go back to that reservation, they're going to cause trouble. Mr. Saban, it causes trouble. The Indians are hungry. Now, you've got to tell them to oh, go. I got to. Go I'm... where they can what find kind of a son of a Papa, what to do? Oh, that's my head. Yeah, yeah, hit me. No, George. Basta adesso. Arrivederci. Lorenzo, no, no. Oh, vergogna ti va! E sta a sentire tuo figlio qualche volta! Chiaccarone! Mi sembra una pentola che bolle! E falla finita qualche volta! It's a question of balance. Only women know these things. Uh, that chair belongs there, yes. Uh, no. Turn the table just a little. There, there, that's it, that's it. Now, you see? See what a difference a woman's touch can make. Oh, we'll have a beautiful home, Candy. I'll get the door. That is, if it hasn't been moved. Mr. Cartwright, I have come to work for you. Lorenzo! Regina. It is good, Lorenzo. When Candy and I are married and we have a house, you can come and live with us. Yes? Marie, what are you doing with the clothes? What it looks like, don't you see? It's your children's clothes. Children who don't live here no more. Oh, uh... You want them to go without clean clothes just because they don't live here no more? Huh? I teach my children to be clean, so I send them clean clothes. Ma, but they're gonna come back. Oh, yeah? When? Show me. Look out the window. You see them coming back? No, they don't come back because their father sent my children away. I mi figlio è cacciato. Ma calma, ma calma. Ah, per il tuo Ma cercate tutto tu vuoi il parere degli altri. Tu credi, ma non è mica vero. Howdy. 
Mr. Rossi? Is he, Georgia Rossi? My name is Sam Kettle. I'd uh, like to talk to you. Mr. Kettle, the police are coming. May I present to my wife, Mrs. Maria Rossi, Mr. Sam Kettle. How do you, Mr. Kettle? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Rossi. Mr. Kettle, what I can do for you? You like to buy some wine? No. I'm here about Indians. Indians? Yes. I'm the government land manager and Indian agent, and I've just learned that you have Indians on your land. See, I have Indians on my land. Did you give them the land? No, no, I, I don't give them. I just let them stay. That's good. You see, the government has a treaty with these Indians, and they're not supposed to leave their reservation. But they will leave it if anybody gives them property outside of their reservation. I'm sick and tired, Mr. Kettle. Everybody's telling me what to do with my land. The Indians, they have the right to stay in the land, and now you leave. Mr. Rossi, it's the law. I didn't make the law, but it's part of my job to enforce it. It's a bad law. Change him. Mr. Rossi, the federal troops will move in and take them off unless you send them back. Mr. Kettle, the Indians are going to stay in the land. Goodbye. George, why you be like that? Why you don't listen to the man? Why you so hard ahead? Listen to the other people too sometimes. Ma lo sai che c'è il testone? Testone dalla forza di cento cavalli. Anche i tuoi figli hanno cento. C'è qualcuno nel pollaio? Presto, presto! Senti che fai caso! They're hungry, eh? Anche ti fame? Oh, ma sto diventando. Pigliate la cara, anche se vuoi delle uova, anche pigliale. Oh, povera creatura, ma come sto diventando? Ma scemo, mi scemo, mi scemo, mi dico. Ma in inglese, eh? No, è solo te, c'è stato il cecchio, non ti sei mai giunto in tu. Lorenzo, regina, ti gada. I can't live like this. E why? Why you? Tu sei la cosa. Mia? Sì, tu, ah, tutta tua. Perché sempre mia? Perché sempre mia? Regina, e poi Lorenzo, e adesso Maria. Ma hanno piantato. E bravi. Che bella famiglia! Sorry, Giorgio, you speak English, eh? Why always everybody tell you what to do, eh? How she wanna tell me what to do? I decide what to do about the Indians, huh? I decide what's right and wrong. Lorenzo, this is the way I raise my son, huh? You tell your papa what to do, huh? You talk back to your papa. Regina, you beautiful girl. Why you always have to tell me? Can they say this? Can they say that? 
Don't you know you papa love you? You're the tiny in the family. They raise it to respect the papa. Why you not can do that? <laughs> Ain't a good husband, man. Eh? Come and build your beautiful house. What I do wrong? Come and buy food. Come and make it nice. <laughs> what I got it. <laughs> And then, the kitchen is no place for a man. But Mr. Cadillac, like, like, she okay. come into my kitchen, she tastes that this is a no good, she tastes that is a no good, all the time come into my kitchen. I quit, mm. I quit. Ah, si, 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 si. No mandi pure a lavar le camicie, a stirare i coletti. Alla cucina ci penso io. Vedrà che bei panzetti li farò. Ciao, Alla cucina ci penso io. Vedrà, vedrà che bei panzetti li preparerò. Oh, what the... It's like you got a little bit of a diplomatic problem on your hands, no? It... Well, I sure hope the plan I have in mind works out. If it does, this will work out, too. Yeah, well, in the meantime, what do we eat? Sweet and sour pizza. Miseria. Miserable. Basta, finita la commedia. George Rossi, you're just like a woman. You can make up your mind. Eh, 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 eh. You gotta do something about it. You gotta do something now. You gotta do something right now. Well, I came as soon as I got your note. Sorry it took so long. Well, government red tape, what do you expect? Well, no harm has been done. Rossi's Indians haven't got into any real bad trouble. Now, thanks to you, I can put them where they belong. Oh, are you free to go? Yes, just as soon as you can get there. Good day, my brother. Good day. Judge Yorosh is a coming to tell you that he make up his mind. I give you this land. I want you to use it. I'm American a citizen. I can give to another American a citizen. I know my rights is a free country. Well, what is going on here? 
You go. Go to our son. Why? Ma, I bring you food. You don't have to steal it no more. Ma, and when you eat them up, you let me know I bring you more. But I want you to stay on the land. I help you. I help you plant the grapes, even if you want. I help you plant the more corn. Please, you stay. Man, no much good for corn. No, I see what is going on. Oh, Ben, the cart, you're right. You come onto my land, huh? You tell them my Indians, they have to go back into the reservation. The reservation is like a jail. Now, Giorgio, hold on now. They're not going back to the same reservation. Not the same? Ma, what do you mean? Well, uh... Well, Sam Kettle and I have persuaded the, the land bureau that they, uh, they should add a, another parcel of land to the reservation. New piece of government land, the, the Crow Lake area. That way they'll have the whole lake, and all that bottom land, and well, plenty of fresh water and sweet grass and all that good game. I know land, good place. We like to live there. We stay. Don't come here again. Is this true? Yeah. <laughs> That's a deal. God bless you. Take the food, the red sky. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A salute. Salute, a salute. 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 And now, I have an announcement to make about my daughter, Regina. Oh, no. Uh -huh. No, Papa. No? no? Why not? I changed my mind. I'm coming, my again? Uh, I mean, is it three times you change your mind? McIfy, what's the matter? Candy is a good man, but not like Italian boy. I better wait for Italian. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to thank my friend Ben Cartwright for what he do for my Indians. <laughs> and what he do for me. <laughs> Giorgio Rossi always get in a fix. And Ben Cartwright, he get him out. <laughs> so I want to tell you, from now on, uh, George Ross is a change man. No more freaks. <laughs> For this, I drink to myself. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, I would like to say something. I would like to drink to George Rossi. But George Rossi must remain always as he is. Here, here. Oh, here, here. <laughs> Chicken cacciatore. <laughs> Italia! <laughs>